Where's to how mean friend and welcome to it in another video. Haha, <laughs> I love CBR.com. Do you know why? Because they are constantly providing me with awesome material for videos. And it's such a great entertainment to make fun of people who don't know anything about Tolkien, about his legacy, about his work, about the Lord of the Rings, and about the cultural historical context in which the Lord of the Rings is set. Well, but let's dive into the article and comment upon it throughout. Prime Video's Rings of Power is already correcting Lord of the Rings' biggest flaw. As if there was a flaw. With the new Rings of Power posters providing sneak peeks at its characters, it seems the show is finally fixing Lord of the Rings' diversity problem. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, is finally building up its marketing hype with newly released posters providing a sneak peek at the key characters of the show. While the posters show of much of the fancy clothing and weaponry, more importantly, they address one of the Lord of the Rings' biggest flaws, its lack of women characters and overall diversity. All right, folks, as uh, the lefties like to say, um, women. There have been many women, or there, there are many women in uh, the works of J.R.R. Tolkien, especially then in the Silmarillion, and in the Lord of the Rings as well. What about the half of the Valar characters that are specifically female? What about characters such as Galadriel? What about characters such as Luthien? What about characters in the Lord of the Rings? Let's not dive into the, the Silmarillion, who's, who was, or has been read by a minimum of people. Just let's dive into the Lord of the Rings. What about Eowyn? One of the most awesome and strongest and most independent female characters in the history of fantasy storytelling. Does anybody remember the line... I am no man. No, no, because the, it's not fitting for them at this moment. And why there were a, a majority of male characters in, in The Lord of the Rings, uh, because The Lord of the Rings is a story about a war. It's a war story, basically, when you think about it. It's a book about a war for the ring. Who went to war, mainly, chiefly? And exclusively, uh, almost, in the Middle Ages, in the pre-Middle, uh, Middle, Medieval, uh, er, you know, time. Who? It was men. It was males. Women did not go to war that often. You could argue, there were shield maidens in Scandinavia. Yes, just a minimum of them. But it was mostly men who went to war. And this is one of the most beautiful things about Tolkien's works. It is fantasy. But in many things, and I have explained this a thousand times in many of my videos, feel free to check them out, Tolkien based his Arda, his world, his Middle-earth, on medieval and pre-medieval existing Europe, on the primary world, his secondary world, as he called it, his Arda, his own fictitious world, is a mirror image of our own world. The Rohirrim are basically Anglo-Saxons, the uh, language of Rohan is Old English, basically. Most of his invented languages, such as Quenya and Sindarin, are based on existing historical languages and their old forms, like on Finnish and on uh, Old Norse and languages like this. There are many things that he was inspired by from his own life, from reality, that he put into The Lord of the Rings, although he hated allegory. You know, expressing the author's own life, putting it on paper, wrapping it in a fantasy package is not the same as being uh, symbolic or being uh, allegoric. The Dead Marshes, it basically represents Tolkien's experience from the First World War, where he fought in the trenches. The Hobbits were based solely on where he grew up. And that is English villages, small English villages in the country, where the population was 100% Caucasian. And that is why 
There is no place for African-looking hobbits in the rings of power. The medieval and pre-medieval Europe was inhabited exclusively by white people. And many shades of them, of course. I'm including the Greeks. I'm including the Spanish people. I'm including the Romans. I'm including the Italian people. I'm including the French. I'm including the Scandinavians. Everybody from Europe. And if there was one bone found somewhere in Europe of an African human, well, of course, that, for example, the Romans brought some other people from other continents to Europe to <clears throat> labor there against their own will. I am not going to use that word that has become a taboo, starting with S, if you know what I mean. So that is why the Lord of the Rings is not as diverse as the Wokies would like. Because it wouldn't be historically accurate. And yes, then some people could argue that it's fantasy. Yeah, but it's fantasy very much and strictly based in reality. Why don't you go and make up your own fantasy, diverse fantasy? And you don't even have to do that. There are diverse fantasy stories like A Game of Thrones, The Song of Ice and Fire. Don't destroy what is perfect. All right, let us continue. Author J.R.R. Tolkien wrote The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings in the first half of the 1900s and was heavily inspired by old, nor uh, old Northwestern culture. Because of this, the vast majority of his characters were white males. And that is bad? <coughs> is it really that bad? No, I, I don't think so. Including the entirety of the Fellowship uh, and the company of Therian Oakenshield. I suppose you would like some black lesbians. I suppose you would like some black um, lesbian dwarfs on wheelchairs to fight orcs and goblins. You would like that, would you? Even if it was absolutely ridiculous. While fans want adaptations to stick to Tolkien's vision, most will agree that nothing is lost by making the world of Middle-earth more, more inclusive. <laughs> Can you see? Those nitwits are admitting it. Those simpletons are willingly admitting in this sentence that it is bullcrap to make the Lord of the Rings inclusive and diverse. But they are still sticking to their leftist socio-political agendas and actively trying to corrupt, destroy good storytelling. Boy, this is so much fun. The Lord of the Rings features some great female characters, as I said, which could definitely be seen as progressive for the time. Gladriel was one of the most powerful beings on Middle-earth, surpassing nearly all elves with her knowledge and power. And there's Eowyn, as I said, who snuck into the male armies and battled against the Witch King. As the Wraith proclaimed, no living man may hinder me. Eowyn... Uh, she was uh, calling herself Derenhelm at the time. Don't you know that, cbr.com? I thought you were experts. Eowyn removed her helmet and declared, You look upon a woman, stabbing him through the head as, as a final blow. And even I was trying to be more thoughtful for the general audience, and I used uh, the sentence from the film. You nitwits. However, a common complaint is that these female characters are few and far between, with males taking up almost every Im important role. And the same goes for black characters. Yeah, oh, you, they, there could be thousands and thousands and thousands of, uh, you know, African characters in The Lord of the Rings. They, they could be playing the orcs and goblins, why not? With all of the main races having fair skin, but luckily, Middle-earth seems to be moving away from this idea. Luckily, oh, finally, finally. <laughs> As the recent promotional material for the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power reveals a wide range of diverse main characters. <laughs> 23 character posters have appeared on the show's social media, all focusing on different characters' hands and weapons. While none of the actors' faces are shown, the hands show varying skin tones. Oh my god, I'm going to come. And the female characters, and judging by their designs, they range from peasants to your loyalty. 
Well, providing a satisfying mix of genders and ethnicities. Oh, this is such a fucking disgusting. Oh my god, look at them. They don't care. They don't care about Tolkien. They don't care about storytelling. They don't care about entertainment. They don't care about escapism. Socio political agendas, clicks, and patting on the back and saying, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I care. I care for the black people. I care. I, I, I care for them. It's all they care about. So, that was my rant. I feel better now. And then let me know in the comments down below what you think, my friends. And let me assure you, I've spoken to many diverse people that told me that they don't, absolutely don't like this idea of the Lord of the Rings being diverse. Let me know all about it in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. And Maria.